Hello. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen my tattoo post um, where I have my back tattoo, which is a quote by Incubus. Blessed is she who clearly sees the wood for the trees to obtain a bird's eye is to turn a blizzard into a breeze. Um, and I think that's not... I think that's a, a quote in general. I'm not sure where that quote originates from, but it's also in that song lyric from Nice to Know You. I'm a huge Incubus fan, like 20 plus years Incubus fan. I will get another tattoo of Incubus on me, but that's not what this is about. Um, this is about recognition invitations and the magic of that. And, you know, the title of this video is going to be Never Be Bitter Again, because I think that's going to work as far as titles go. Um, but I'm going to just tell you this story because I think it's actually magical. It is written on my Instagram, but I can go a little bit more into detail here. So back in the day, my old Facebook, before I completely deleted it, um, I would write long prose, you know, I, I just, writing is my thing, and I liked Facebook because unlike Twitter, there's no, you know, max character count, you could just write and write and write, and so I used to write all these long, you know, statuses, and my friend Nikki Lynette, um, at the time hit me up and was like, you're a really good writer. You know, my friend has a blog. I want to introduce you to her. So she introduced me to my now really good friend, Mika, who had an alternative modeling agency and a blog called Sugar and Spikes. I didn't have a tattoo at this time. I really wanted a tattoo and I was planning to get my first tattoo while I was traveling to Europe. I want to get all my tattoos while traveling. I just feel like it's a really good way to mark the experience. So I haven't gotten another one yet. I plan on it. Um, I actually have gotten in touch with the woman who did this tattoo. I'm hoping to meet her somewhere in the world again one day. <clears throat> anyway, so I talked to Mika. I told her I was planning to go to Europe and that um, I was gonna get my first tattoo there and I wanted to blog about it. And so, you know, she asked if I put the blog on her blog. <laughs> and so, yeah, went to Europe, whatever. I knew I needed to get this tattoo somewhere in Europe. At first I thought I was gonna get, um, I suggest we learn to love ourselves before it's made illegal, but I wanted to get it in French and I wanted to get it while I was in France, but that didn't end up working out. So what I ended up getting was the tattoo that I have in London and I was surfing because I did a lot of couch surfing when I went to Europe. I did not. Airbnb was kind of new. It was happening. We did a little bit of that, um, but I did a lot of couch surfing because in Europe, people travel around so much. That site, couchsurfing.org, used to be popping. Like, Europeans stay with each other and they do it all the time because they get like five, eight weeks off. So, they would, they're just used to going and staying with strangers. And then when they go travel, they'll go stay with people who stay with them. And you know, you leave reviews so you understand how safe people are. And it's a trust based site and you don't charge people, you know. And it just was a very normal thing, definitely in the early 2010s and probably a little before that. And so I feel like I got in right before capitalism took over, like personal, you know what I mean? Like stays with Airbnb. Um, so I got to stay a lot of places, you know, and travel a lot of places for really low cost because I was staying with locals. And it also just enhanced my experience because, you know, I had a friend, especially solo traveling, I would go stay with people and they would become my friends and, you know, we would have fun around the city and I just made so many great connections and I was never in any danger and it was like just a really beautiful experience overall. Anyway, so... It's all, it also had like a forum on there where even if you weren't staying with people, you could meet up with other people that were traveling and things of that nature and just whatever. So 
and because everybody you if you stay with somebody they have to leave your review and you have to leave them a review so people that traveled often would have all kinds of reviews by people you know what i mean and the the site and those reviews are monitored heavily you could only leave a review if you stay with somebody or actually no i think you can leave a review for people if you just met up with them and things of that nature too so anyway I saw on there this woman who was like a traveling tattoo artist. She was traveling around Europe with nothing but her bicycle and like a backpack and her tattoo clip. And she was trading tattoos for stays with people and things of that nature. So I was like, hey, I want to get a tattoo. I'm writing a blog for this, you know, blog um, in my friend in New York who has this blog. And I would love to include you in that blog and get a tattoo by you and she was like oh my god like i'm doing a blog too so maybe we can just trade you do a blog you know the blog on me i'll do the blog on you free of charge so i ended up getting my tattoo for free i rode the train out from london to brighton and she was staying with someone in this really cool beach house right on the beach and that's where I got my tattoo. And she's a very talented tattoo artist. She freehand wrote the script. And um, it was just, I, I was so impressed by that. And she made it as, you know, as comfortable as she could. She's so talented. She also knows stick and poke. She traveled so much and learned so much about tattooing while she was traveling. And she's so wonderful had a beautiful experience, wrote the blog, she wrote the blog. So that was like the, the least of it all. My friend doesn't even have that blog anymore. But the fact is, I got that tattoo for no charge while traveling in the best setting you could possibly imagine. You know, in the most projector way possible, making a friend you know, experiencing just like the, the beautiful algorithm of this world, all because my friend recognized me for being a good writer and connected me with someone. And I was invited to write that blog. And I went to Europe and I was, you know what I mean? Like this person made a post. So, you know, I took that post as an invitation to hit her up. And then she invited me to do my tattoo for free, just based on a mutual exchange. And that's kind of the magic. You know, my recognition was in writing and the invitation was about writing. And that led to a very magical moment that I'll never forget from my time traveling through Europe. And so I want to put it out there that the thing about following recognition and invitations, I think if we look at that too literally, we really miss out on the magic of it. You could get a recognition for something so mundane. You, I don't know, are the best person to go to the store because you always get everything right. You always find all the deals. I'm not feeling too well. Can you please go to the store for me? I know that sounds like a crappy, but hear me out. So then, oh my God, yeah, I'll go to the store for you. Even though those projectors, like, we're not supposed to be doing the labor like that. But walk with me here. You go to the store for this person because they recognize you. They ask you to do something for them. Um, you get to the store, you bump into a director and y'all have a joke and a laugh about whatever. And then the next thing you know, the director is inviting you for a thing. You know what I mean? It's, you know, you're exactly who I was actually looking for, for this film. Can you come audition? And then that was another invitation. Now you got another invitation with recognition and then you go do that and then your life changes, right? I think that's important to know because I think in a lot of human design conversations, we think of the most literal thing, like I wanna be an actress, so I need to wait until I'm in, recognized for act. I need to, you know, put clips out there online, be recognized for acting, 
and then eventually I'll get an invitation for the right thing. And yes, it may happen that literally, especially if you're a specific person, right? Meaning you have a defined throat. Um, but if you're non-specific, especially, you might find, I mean, anybody, you might just find that this journey is really not this straight line that we think it is. It's just kind of all over the place. And so if you're very open to what things might bring, then you'll look at every single moment of recognition and invitation as this really magical moment that could lead to who knows what but you have to know that your aura in the universe is trying to get you to the places you desire to be and so take the breadcrumbs do your strategy you know what i mean um I mean, do your authority. So, you know, if I get an invitation, I'm an, I've learned to just sleep on things. Give myself 24 to 48 hours to just sleep on it before I say yes or no. Because I'm an emotional authority and I need to really think about whether or not I want to do it. Right? So do that. Whatever your authority is. But really honor the recognition and invitation when it comes through because that really might lead you from point A to P. You know what I mean? Like, and skip all the letters in between. So know that and honor that and don't be afraid to take the breadcrumbs. Don't think that minor invitations and minor recognition isn't really important for a projector. Recognition and invitation of any kind is so important. The reason that I'm doing the six line soiree is because my friend Jade loved hearing my stories and recognized that I'm like a really good six line and I have really great stories and I am a role model type and recognized my wisdom and said, you know, I was trying to get some other things together. And she was like, actually, why don't you do this? Tell your stories. Do that. And I'm doing it. And whether that's successful or not, I have no doubt in my mind that that recognition and invitation will lead to something else. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't care. But I believe that it will. So anyway. It's impossible to be bitter when your life is that magical. It is impossible to be bitter when your life is that magical. And when you put down the script of what it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to look, where you're supposed to be, where how you're supposed to look, when you put all that down and follow the breadcrumbs of your design, and really experience all that magic, it is, you'll, bitterness won't exist there because you won't be in your not self. So I'm gonna wrap this video up today because I got things to do, but thank you. Check out my Instagram, um, Shez Out of Nowhere. Check out my Twitter, Shez Owen. Please take advantage of the Six Line Soiree. I would love to see you there and tell all my business to anyone who wants to listen. <laughs> because I have so many stories that I think really um, would help you learn to embody human design um, because it's how we should be teaching it um, through storytelling, through our experiences. Anyway, bye.